We've been coming up with a plan for a little while now to make a car that's kind of fast, also kind of boring, but also on the cheap. It's something that's a bit of a sleeper, and the kind of cars we're thinking about is the kind of thing that you might see so often on the road that you stop seeing them. Automotive they, ninjas. They just blend into the background of automotive mush. But there is a lot of potential out there with just a little bit of a tickle. It's the kind of car that you can order off your iPhone and it'll either pick you up or bring you a burger. The question is, can you make a car that's fast, cool and cheap? No. <laughs> no, you can't. But can you make a car that's fast and kind of cheap? Yes. And that is what we are about to go and buy. There's lots of appropriate cars for what I'm trying to do. Let's see if we can find it. Did you say one owner car? Yes. So oh, it's technically two, but odd by two. It's them. been in the family your whole life, though. Correct. Oh, that's awesome. Since new, yeah. Cool, man. So it's it's original receipts since bought new. So it's seen it's seen some stuff. And how many k's did you say are on it? Two eighteen. Yeah, about right for this age. Hey. So everything works and it's been serviced. It's been it's probably due in for its next service. So yeah. Always being changed. Yeah. Three and a half grand. Three and a half is it? I've got to start somewhere. You don't have to take three and a half grand, no, no, no. but I'd like to pay that for it. Uh, I was gonna honestly be cool and say I didn't want to negotiate and just have to take the price, but I think three and a half is too low. I, I, I think just for nostalgic reasons, I, I'm happy to take four. Four grand? Yeah. Done. Hey, Great, man. Honestly, do got some bank deeds, I'll transfer it right now, instant. Awesome. You wanna the, the this is why. Easy sell for you. We'll make it cool, man, and you will see it on the internet. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um... Uh, Time to take it back to the shed and see up close what I've actually purchased. You know, when I'm standing here, it means that there is a brand new project car incoming, and this is the kind of car that we've never had on the show before. An absolute nugget, something that has, I'd say, an excitement level that is below zero, but we are going to fix that with some mad cheap parts that are coming off the internet. Here it is, everybody. The Absolute Nugget Camry. These here are used in Australia to deliver food for Uber Eats. They're used as taxis. They're used as... Um... Family transport vehicles, man. These things oh. are just everywhere. People put their families in them. They're relied upon. They just work and they work. And there's a reason they never disappear like cockroaches because they just keep coming back. You can't kill them. Oh, what a boring feeling. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's a few notable... Uh, <laughs> I can see a few notable things that are pretty exciting about this already. Um, mainly the overspray on the headlights. If you check this out, I mean, no masking was required. They're like, we're going to sell this to some guy for way too much money. Touch That's up. Martin. That's me. Uh, and, um, dude, look at the touch-ups on it. Yeah. Not even the but same paint. Bonnet strut, dude. Look how fancy oh, that wow. is. Oh, wow. Even Mark 8 Golf R's don't get those. Definitely has no it's a little fancy. stop leak in it. Look, it's got a couple of oil leaks. It's just leaking horsepower, but it's fine. It, it means terrible. it's a perpetual oil change. Um, what's interesting about this is 2.4 litre. Yep, that's All good. All the best four cylinders, like K24s, and the Mybeck thing that's in, in Too Sexy, all 2.4 litres. So yep. I imagine this has as much potential as one of those. That's right, we finally did it. It's a Camry, the automotive equivalent of a potato. Not a crispy deep fried potato, a boiled, mouldy, stinky potato that's mixed with egg white and served cold. What do you want to know about this thing? Four cylinders, auto, very reliable, very boring. The look of it will make you vomit. The smell alone will give you diarrhea. It's almost 20 years old, and I challenge you not to see one when you next drive your car around. The people who buy these, they open the door, they fart in them, they drive in them, that is it. No form, no aesthetic, no power, no performance, and sure as hell, no street cred. You love this car the same way you love a vacuum, and they both suck about as much as each other. Well, there's a bunch of information that I found incredibly boring, and you probably did as well. This is the worst car in the worst colour, with the worst smell, yep. with the worst paint job. Yeah. It's just yep. uh, utterly boring. And for a Camry, it's cheap, but Camrys aren't cheap. That's the thing. You can't even go, oh, well, I picked it up for $300. Like, it's still thousands of dollars to buy one, but they hold their value for a reason, because they just keep working. And where some people see all those things, other people, suckers like me, see potential. Because I'm seeing some potential in this thing. When you see an exciting car, normally that's owned by an exciting person, someone who has a propensity for excitement. 
when you see a kind of lightweight racing car, someone who likes to live on the edge, yep. have a little bit of excitement. Yep. When you see someone with a drift car, some bong smoking dickhead from out west, they all point towards a particular thing. Yep. This here, boring car, boring person. Maybe. But maybe you can transform that, people. Maybe you can. Maybe you can do something that doesn't cost a lot of money to turn this thing from the most boring car in existence to something that's not still... <laughs> that doesn't involve a match, but it does involve big flames within the combustion cylinders. And how do you do that? You add a whole lot of air. How do you add a whole lot of air to your combustion cylinders? Don't tell them, Martin. Let's have a look around. Let's have a look around. Uh, the car has... This one has a steering wheel. You should sit in it. It's automatic. See how, see how uh, it fits you. It's got some rubber bands here where I reckon this here is where somebody kept their taxi thing. The person probably denied it was used as a taxi. It smells like a taxi. Are you it's got all the sticky tape and stuff here from when they've put their little dash cameras. It's got a camera oh, up here. Yes. Um, so it's festy. It smells like a taxi. Inside, there's a steering wheel and a big knob. Uh, and this is though? here as well. Um, now, <laughs> over here, you've got a rear door and there's a back seat. Uh, it's got... Velour interior. Some wheels and tyres on it. Uh, a big boot that I guess somebody... somebody likes eating that garbage. Um, not the actual garbage, but the stuff that was in the garbage. There's a... Uh, what, what do you call them? Tissues on the back. Uh, it, like, it's just... It's just absolute garbage. It so, really is. So it's, it's time to, uh, to admit that I may or may not, I may, I did, go on the internet and search by cheapest, buy it now, not for the car. I mean, I did that too. Yeah. But this wasn't the cheapest, like, but it was the best one for the money. Before you tell that story, Martin, can we just be clear? There's a lot of passion here with Mighty Car Mods. Heaps. Very passionate about mm. cars and our projects. Yep. Not this one. Not this one. And that opens up possibilities and potential to, to grow the passion. What is a cool car anyway? What, what is, is a, cool, is a car? cool car cool because the internet says it's cool or because an Instagram page says it's Pretty cool? Pretty much any Nissan Tudor. I can't, any, like, having own, owning a Nissan Tudor, I cannot argue with that. Okay. Anyway, Martin, back to using the internet so, to buy things. buy cheapest, buy it now, sort by cheapest. I'm talking the cheapest of cheapest ones we've ever got. I have acquired a turbo kit for this Camry. Now, why do they even exist, you might be asking. Because in America, which is a country that's not here, there's a thing called a Scion. What's a Scion? Well, it's not... Where? Oh, in South Canada. But south of Canada, there's United a States place, of America, yeah. like North, North, Northern yep. America. And, um, also known as South Canada, some people call it. No one calls it's it that. It's the Tasmania of Canada. No one calls it that. Okay, keep going. Um, anyway, there's a thing called a Scion. And then in Scion land, there's a thing called a... I don't even know, XB, XS, they got weird names. Anyway, what they do have is Toyota drive lines, people. And that means that a turbo kit for a Scion, which is cheap because heaps of people in America like turboing their nuggets, means you can get one that fits our Camry. So I've purchased it and it's here in a box. Let me show you how is awesome it this is. Is that box right there? Is that box Shall right we have there? a look? Let's have a look. This is our turbo kit. How much was it? Eight. Hundred dollars. That's good. That's it. That's for the entire thing, including that cast manifold, which actually looks pretty good. Uh, it what else do we get in here, Martin? Comes with the most important part. Oh, the most important part. Don't show that, Martin. This is the most important part. Multi gauge. Monster taco. Why? With a shift light and all of the hard. Get to the turbo Why? last, Martin. No, Why? no. Don't don't blow your boost all too right. early. What else have we got? Um, oh, that box doesn't look. What else that have we got here? We've got hammered. more. Gauge pods. This is all of the uh, oh, clamps. A ginormous wastegate. Look, I've never seen one that big. It's freaking huge. Is this oil lines? External one? wastegate. That's the oil lines which should plumb in. Although you do have to make pretty much all of them yourself, so it's still very much DIY. This is a fuel pressure regulator, I think, by the looks of it. Silicons for intercooler piping and all of the intercooler, the intercooler piping. Intercooler pipes and all are just, These are just universals, though, so you do have to cut them up or use joiners, I believe. That's the screamer pipe, so I don't think you're supposed to plumb it back in. I think you're supposed to plumb it to atmosphere, which is still... There's still a lot of stuff in this box, man, for $800. There is a lot of stuff in here. Isn't there? Like, there's your, your screamer pipe. Oh. There's whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Look what I've got over here, man. What's this? Boost controller. Oh, boost controller is a boost T. <laughs> and we've got a little bit of a... That sounds international, doesn't it? I wonder it? if it's going to fit. 
And anyway, and then a whole bunch of other pipes and what else have we got there? Oh, that's an adapter for a Why is there so valve. much pipe? Because you've got to make it yourself. Oh, so heaps of this just Yeah, turns you, into you've got to work it out yourself. But that's not terrible. I mean, like sometimes, like with our Civic, we got one that had a kit with piping, but the piping didn't fit. So you end up having to make it anyway. Oh, All right, Mun. That'll do. Show us right. the turbo, mate. Turbo. The box that is... looks pretty big, actually, the dude. Is... Why is the box so hammered? I don't know. Is this meant to be a copy of something? Or is it a, like, what is um, it exactly that we're seeing here? I think it's like some kind of, like, that's the wastegate port, which is absolutely microscopic. Okay. So that's the first thing that's a bit weird about it. I mean, I guess it'll work. I'm pretty sure that's a T3 or a T4 flange. Yep. Don't know what flange that is. This could be like a copy of a stock of line. something. Um, but, but it's going to work. But and that's the only thing that we need it to do at we this have, point. Um, we have bigger problems with this. Yeah. It's got a giant crack in it. Like you can see, something's hit it. Look. It's hit and then all up the inside, there's a massive hairline crack from that all the way up here. Is there really? Yeah, there. Can you see? Oh. Like the casting's average anyway, but I think that might have had a big hit. Like look at the, look at the box. Anyway, so, um, the whole kit's great and the turbo's perfect. It's awesome. What are we going to do next, people? Um, other than um, uh, try and sort out that turbo, what we actually want to do is, before we kick off, see how much power the car makes mm -hmm. and do a stock run down at the drag. So we've got a baseline so that once we, once we put all this junk on it, We've got, we've got a comparison for our sleeper Camry. We're going to strap the Camry down on the dyno. We aren't even sure if they make dynos that fit Camrys because we can't think of a good reason that anyone would ever dyno one of these things. But we want to know just how bad this car really is. Surely it has to at least crack 100 kilowatts. After the dyno operator's purged himself of his breakfast from having to sit in this septic stinking automotive scrotum, he's going to push the pedal to the parasite infested carpet to see what this thing's really got. We're going to be doing two runs back to back to make sure it's a fair test and the Camry will very slowly spin up the rollers to put out an absolutely enormous power figure. So on the dyno, this Camry has made 79.4 kilowatts. Uh, for those playing along at home, the same power as a 1.6 litre Suzuki Swift. Absolute it's, rubbish. Look, the auto soaked up a bit of the, the power and the torque. What you lose in power, you gain in refinement. You, get, you don't want your, your milkshakes that are being delivered to get sloshed around too much, do you? What an absolute load of bullshit. So <laughs> the next thing to do is send this boat down the quarter mile to see what kind of figures we can get. Um, it, there's not a whole lot more to say. This car sucks hard, but let's send it down the drags. The quarter mile is the true test of a car's straight line performance. We asked a mate to take the Camry for us because we were too embarrassed to do it ourselves. But they did thrash the absolute pants off it and managed to lay down an unbelievable time. That's actually quite believable. The speedo does go up to 240, a sign of things to come. We've managed to get an astonishing 11.9 second quarter mile. Oh wait, no, that's us on the right, that's a 17.3. A best of 17.3, that is not too bad really, is that's it? Bad. It's so <laughs> slow. Almost 15 years ago when we bought this TRD laser for $92.50, it did a 19 flat. That must have been at least an 11 second pass. This is only like one and a half seconds faster. I know once you're talking proper drag time, sub tens, one and a half seconds is a big deal. When you're up near 20 seconds, no. No, it's not. There, I'm, there's some reason. You don't have to try and convince me oh, it's no, good. I'm not, and I'm not gonna try and there's, convince you it's bad. All I'm saying this is, car is exactly what it is. And room, we know, we don't need to pretend. But there's room they for know. improvement. Everyone, of course but there's they room know, for but improvement. But they also know the potential and they know what can happen no, with don't. a little bit of a tickle, no, a little don't. bit of boost, no, they don't. a little bit of boost up in there. <laughs> they know that that is gonna just transform this car. I'm, I'm actually frothingly excited about how good this is gonna be when it's got boost. It's gonna stay auto, not, gonna, not craziness, like let's do it re reasonably and not spend stupid money on a Camry, because let's admit I already did that. And then we are gonna, we're gonna be having some fun with this. When we work on a Camry, the turbo's gonna go wee. It'll be like people that have nipples. 
and it'll drink breast milk and get strong. Oh, what a feeling. What did I just listen to? It's going to grow? Yes, it'll grow strong. <laughs> it's just a bebe right now. It's just a suckling bebe. But Martin and I are, are a pair of human... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. It's an analogy, oh keep going with it. Uh, but we're going to feed it the milk of turbos. We have the formula to um, to make this way better. By the way, Super Cheap Auto asked us for our best car for their upcoming oils campaign, and we bought this. If we can get it working and we can get it fast, uh, you will probably see it on TV at some point. That's right, people. Being known for building the biggest automotive weapons on all of YouTube and hosting the world's best four-wheel driving channel has meant we've been tasked with supplying one of the most incredible cars in the history of the internet to be used in an ad for one of the most incredible automotive stores in all of the universe, Super Cheap Auto. It'll be a TV ad like nothing that your eyeballs or earballs have seen before. They said buy something cool, so we bought a Camry and no, they haven't seen this video until now, so it surprises all around once they see where their money went. But once we rip half the engine apart, we're going to be adding boost. And if there's one thing that we've learned from doing this show since before Obama was the Prime Minister of Canada, it's that turbos make everything better. And did you know that we also make all of our own music for the show? This piece of music right now is meant to feel like we're on a mechanical journey of discovery. There's a freshness and a pace to it that's meant to help drive the story along as we enter new frontiers. And you, my dear friend are coming with us on this adventure. Look at this weird little resonator thing on the intake. So it's just basically a bit of tube. Hello. Uh, that would somehow affect the resonant frequency of uh, the intake sound for noise. Um, someone somewhere knows why. Someone explain to us in the comments. Here it is. It's Toyota part 17894280060. By the time you're commenting on it, I've already Googled it, but Google it anyway and put it in the comments because I know you want to. There go. Yes. Look at that. See you later. So now we replace that with turbo things. Yep. If you want to be extra, extra, extra cheap, you could also cut it here and try and weld on your turbo, but you yep. might interfere with some other stuff. But that's an option too. This, I don't know how it would go with boost, but we Martin, have a manifold. So. Grab our turbo manifold and right now, let's see if it even fits. Like, let's see if it lines up or if we actually just got ripped. Like, is that actually going to... See, that, that doesn't line up, man. Dipstick, dipstick's in the way. But if we move, if we 10 mil that dipstick and just rotate oh, dude, it. Let, let's just, let, let's just, just take it. it live, Martin. This it. is how dramatic this is. We're going live right now. You get to see this as it's happening for us. It's happening for you at home as well. So, alternator is, question, Very dramatic. is questionable. That should just rotate. Yeah, I don't know. You just pull it out if you want. All right, so. Oh, no, actually, that's all right. You can just do right, it. Can yeah, just go fine. over there. Now, it's whether it fits with the alternator. Oh, Martin, come on. Come on, Martin. Get in there, mate. Oh, it's so, oh, close. It's so close, Martin. It's so close. It's that alternator and maybe needs a... It needs a, a hammer. ...bit of love with an angle grinder. But for now, just to test fit it, we can probably... No, we can't because the alternator can't move. <laughs> Thanks for... No, it'll be fine. We'll make it work. Oh, we can't, we can't drop this? It's... That won't, uh, that won't go further down because that tensions the belt. Oh, we need to actually hack out a piece of that mount. Yeah, the mount or this one or the other. Yeah, maybe the alternator. Great. Bolt's on. If you're cracking out an angle grinder within the first few minutes of opening your bolt on kit, you might start to wonder if you've made the right choice. If there's one thing I've learned from using turbo kits like this, it's that they almost never fit properly. So, the turbo. It's like a T3 or a T flange, T4 flange, so you can choose which direction it goes, but I reckon that way with the dump going straight down. 
just protect that heater pipe a bit. Yep. Gives you heaps more room for intake over there, otherwise we're a bit stuck. I mean, you can flip it around if you want, see if it fits. The problem that we've run into, though, is that the... Um, oh, the turbo's this cracked. bolt-on <laughs> kit... Well, yeah, one of the problems is the turbo's cracked, but also um, it just doesn't fit. Like, all the... The stuff doesn't, it's either broken or it yeah, doesn't fit. That doesn't fit. Happen. Yeah, it has that's to go happen. So, um, the other issue we have that's probably the biggest issue that I can see is that this, the manifold touches the alternator, like touches all the plastic electronics at the back of the alternator. There's really no way to protect it. So I don't really know. Unless on the American versions of cars that have this motor, it alternator's not there. Or <laughs> alternatively, we are, yeah. Remember we were saying before the really dodgy way to do it is just to cut this off? I like the dodgy way. Yeah. That limits our turbo choice, but it mean, what it means is we can maybe use a turbo off another car or something we've got sitting around that's... It'll be a better turbo than this, but yeah. that has to go in the bin anyway. So yeah. we're probably going to have to spend a couple hundred bucks on a decent turbo, mm. but then we can maybe weld... I don't know. I actually don't know. we got some things to work out, Martin. Yeah. But, I mean, it's simple to work on in terms of how easy it is to pull this apart. This is ticking so many boxes. Look, look at it. It's all here. It's all in front of you. Yeah. It's in, for how simple it is. Mm. But yeah, the, the kit doesn't make it simple. <laughs> Some time has passed since we've been working on this mad Camry because uh, it didn't fit. No. And it didn't work. No. It was broken. Yes. So we bought the cheapest we could find, uh, hoping it would fit. Because look, if it did fit, if the turbo wasn't cracked and the manifold fit and didn't basically melt the alternator, it'd be on there already. Uh, but it's not, and we don't have a lot of time to get this car working, driving, tuned, like making sure it actually works at all. So we've had to spend a little bit more money. We're still trying to go as inexpensive as we possibly can, but we have bumped the quality up one notch. And that's what money does for you, really. It mm. unlocks time. That's what it you does. Think about the job that you do every single day. You do your job. Let's pretend you work for eight hours. Someone gives you some money. You use that money. You go and buy some food that you didn't have to run the farm yourself. Mm -hmm you're paying for someone else to, so you're swapping your time for stuff, food, rent, other things. We swapped some money for this. For a chunk of metal. Uh, so this is, for a chunk of metal. So this is cast and it looks kind of similar, right? But when you start to look close, you see some differences. Firstly, the angle's a bit different on the flange, which actually kicks the turbo away from the block. But most importantly for us- Way less meat. Yeah, it's look at this, all this bit. It's this bit. So this is the bit that was failing, that we tried to grind, that was failing on the alternator, and this one goes up and out of the way like someone's actually thought about it. But it's still a cast piece, which means it's like, once you make the dies and all that, it's pretty cheap, or the investment mole, however they do it, it's pretty cheap to reproduce. So, I'm just gonna slip this on. It'll go, it'll go. We're gonna put new head studs on, so it's probably just catching up oh, on right. those. There we go. <laughs> How's that engine mount? Go uh, again, watch and this. And that's now... Watch this do that again. <laughs> but it's now clearing there. the alternator, it so is. that fits. Heaps of room. So, um, our mad turbo kit, let me just remind you all, when you buy a turbo kit, what do you expect to get? A manifold, a turbo, an intercooler, some piping. Uh, the manifold that we got doesn't fit. Bin. The turbo was cracked. Bin. So, we've also got a new turbo, which we'll show you right now. Because we had to buy another turbo, I was able to upgrade slightly. Um, just to get something a little bit better quality. So, I mean, it's still made in China, but it's a Pulsar Turbo. And this is quite nice, actually. Uh, one of the benefits about this one is the outlet is V-band. So instead of having to use flanges and gaskets and bolts, we just put a nice little V-band on there with our pipe to connect back into the exhaust system. That'll save us a bit of time. Uh, still an externally gated turbo, super simple and not that expensive for that reason as well. And tried to size this perfectly to a 2.4 litre engine. Uh, to make sure it's going to make some decent power. So let's see if this will fit our new manifold. First up, we're going to clock the turbo. That means rotating both the compressor and exhaust housings to fit within the confines of the Camry engine bay. It's as simple as loosening all the bolts that hold it together, test fitting it, and then making sure everything is pointing where we want it. Our original manifold is not going to fit, and the turbo from the kit being broken means we're now going to have to make up a bunch of custom stuff. That means all the parts that are supposed to work together no longer do, and it means we have to make everything our own way. That does have some benefits, but it does take more time. While Marty's wrangling the turbo, I'm gonna chase a few oil leaks that look like they've started up the top of the engine somewhere and then made their way right down to the gooch and they're dripping all over the floor. This is nearly always a rocker cover that's got dried out seals. It's a cheap and easy fix and the first place to check if you're getting oil leaks from up the top. 
Camry parts are cheap and abundant and we can get pretty much everything we need including surface items from Super Cheap Auto. I've ordered a full gasket set as well as oils, filters and plugs which I'll be able to pick up in store. This shows just how neglected this engine's been. You need a mallet and a chisel to get all the old rubber pieces out that are now hard as glass. A brand new rubber gasket's going in that actually looks and feels like rubber and hopefully that should put a stop to our leaks from the top end. When we pulled the original exhaust manifold off, I noticed that it was very lightweight and had a lot of supporting brackets, meaning most of the weight of that thing is probably not actually supported by the head and there's only five head studs holding the whole thing and they're M8, which means they're tiny. So our giant exhaust manifold and big heavy turbo is gonna be hanging a lot of extra weight off that. Now we are gonna to have to support it with a bracket, but to give it an extra chance, I've also got us some titanium little head stud things. It's a good upgrade if you are hanging big heavy turbo stuff off, off it and they're old and tired. It's not that expensive for some peace of mind. You might be wondering by now why we went for the cheaper four-cylinder version of this car when the V6-1s are actually pretty fast. Well, it's cheap and there's heaps of them and we wanted to see just how good the 2.4-litre 2AZ FE engine actually is. It's the same capacity as a Honda K24 and tech-wise it's kind of of the same era. It's got modern features like valve lift, coil-on plug ignition, knock sensing and a bunch of other things we'll be able to take advantage of to make power. It is an aluminium block with cast iron cylinder liners, a forged crank and double overhead cams. This engine came out in all sorts of cars like RAV4s, Alphards, Scion TCs, XBs and even a Corolla. Toyota kept using this engine for nearly a decade after this one, so it's safe to say it worked for them. We've got one of the earlier versions which means it's slightly lower compression ratio which is perfect for turbocharging. The new manifold we got from the USA fits with a little bit of encouragement. Then I can put some bigger injectors into the factory fuel rail. It will require a little bit of re-plumbing to get the right fuel pressure for a turbo application. With the manifold in place and the turbo clock just right, it can be bolted on so we can move on to the next few jobs. And I have to say it, it really looks at home in that engine bay. Turbo is on. I'm beyond excited to put it mildly, because that fits, that manifold is freaking awesome. That turbo fits perfectly, it clocks perfectly. You can get to all of it. It's a little bit tight to get the dump out, but that's pretty standard. Um, we just put a bit of heat shielding stuff there into a really tight 90 degree. Intake is blocked a bit by this cruise control, I think is what that is, maybe? So I don't know, we look at that. Maybe it's a throttle cable, I have no idea. But overall, it's gonna work, people. Injectors are in too, and a new rocker cover gasket. So we're actually making some really good progress. A few bits we're waiting on now, so we'll come back to this in a day or two and keep going. A big part of actually making this work is the fuel system, because when you add that air, you add that boost, you have gotta match it with some fuel. That is the key to making this work. So the injectors are now in and they're plugged in, thanks to the adapters that we've got. Now I've gotta work out what to do with the fuel pump. I have ordered one, which hopefully will fit the car. I have no idea. I don't even know where you get to it. Maybe under the seat, maybe under the car. So now I'm gonna try and get the fuel pump in there and then work out how to get the fuel pressure regulator in there so that we can adjust the level of fuel pressure based on the amount of boost. Some injector plug adapters convert from the Denso style connector to the Bosch type and it saves a bit of time cutting and soldering the wires together if you don't have them. Next, I need to extract the fuel pump. In this era of car, it's almost always a plastic drop-in unit that contains the fuel pump, filter and the pressure regulator. This makes a nice clean run of one hose up to the engine bay, which is nice for Toyota when they assemble them, but not as good for us when we turbo it. So I'm gonna gut the whole thing and hack it together so I can stick a higher capacity pump in there. Four bucks! One four bucks on the scratchy. To make this work, I'm going to use the original feed port as a return and then install a bulkhead fitting into the top of the plastic fuel pump assembly that the pump blasts the fuel out of. This adds in the return line that Toyota never did and means we have more precise control of fuel pressure. Later on, I'll run a bigger fuel feed up to the front of the car. Your car goes ting, 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 ping, ping, ping. My car goes psh, psh. My car goes psh. My car goes sickle, sickle. I don't really wanna cop no tickets But when I hit the clutch kick Look at my rear view B can't see shit Everybody wanna be the best The best If your car doesn't psh, Then please shut your lips Mighty car Mars is the best Yo My car goes rap Bitty rap rap My car goes shitty chitty bang bang My car goes A to B Eat the Civic and the Lambo When it's just a tease Move money in me When we leave the scene All you hear is psh, psh, Shit the gas too fast And the furious If you wanna race Then you must be delirious Yo Alright Got a fuel hunger. Very, very happy with that. 
So got my fitting on the top, AN fitting. Our fuel level will still work, but we get high pressure out of our new one. And then we use the existing send as a return, which now just leaks back down here. Now the filter doesn't work anymore. So gonna have to put an inline fuel filter, which I will do just using a basic S, S chassis R200 that's on lots of Nissans. There's lots of ways to build a bigger fuel system, but it is important for a turbocharged car. You can use external pumps, surge tanks, full replacement drop-in hangers, or even new fuel tanks. To keep costs down, I've only had to buy a bulkhead fitting, a bigger pump, and a pressure regulator. It keeps the pump in the tank where it's quiet, we can utilize the factory pump wiring, and the relays, which also saves time and money. A few little mods to the bracket that holds it all in place, and we are good to go. Next on the list of jobs is to tap the sump for the oil return. So I'm going to take the car over to Super Garage so I can get it up in the air, drain the oil out and remove the sump. After removing it and getting splooshed on, the next step is to clean the sump with degreaser, then strip the spot I've chosen for the fitting back to bare metal. I'm using a Dash 10 stainless weld on bung as it gives you flexibility to use a variety of different hose setups for the turbo drain. Step one, drill the hole. Step two, weld the bung on. Step three, paint and reseal the sump and then install it back onto the engine and leave it to dry. While I'm under the car, I'm going to give the transmission a service. The dipstick says it never needs to be serviced, but the colour of the oil says otherwise. Burned and worn out transmission oil will kill this thing and adding boost and power will make it happen even quicker. So to prevent disappointment and lame skids, I'm going to flush it and change the trans filter. So, automatic transmission has been serviced. We'll put some new fluid in that. That's like a boring thing, but hopefully we'll help keep it alive when we are putting a fair bit more power through that automatic transmission. We've also got an oil drain on the turbo ready to go. We've just got to make the cable for that or the hose for that, but also we need to do our exhaust. So we're going to go to the top of the engine now and get the oil into the turbo, which is also very important. Teeing in the oil pressure switch is by far the easiest way to do this. A few 1 8 BSP fittings and adapters, a bit of braided high pressure hose and fittings, and we are done. I'm really happy with how the oil feed's coming together. Sometimes it's just easy. You can see it, it's on the front of the block. Often it's at the back and you can't see what you're doing. This little T-piece means the original factory oil pressure switch can remain. If we we're going fancier with an ECU or a really extensive one, we could put our oil pressure sensor on there as well, but for now we don't need to worry about that. Then I'm just using these little adapters which go male flare AN to BSPT 1.8 and that will screw into this adapter which then gets us into AN standard which is what the turbo has. So all we have to do is get from here to the turbo, done. Oiling system completely finished. Ball bearing turbos will often come with a restrictor like this that helps supply the correct amount of oil to keep them happy. If you don't want to make the supply line, any good hydraulic hose place can make one for you if you take them some measurements and your fittings. The camera just keeps on surprising me with how willing it is to accept this turbo kit. Everything's in a good spot, there's tons of room, and I think it's going to be just great. We are using an externally wastegated turbo. Um, I like internal wastegated turbos the most because it's just simple and you don't have to run all the extra stuff. But if you're doing an external wastegate, uh, GFB make an awesome one, which we also used on the Lavorg, which looks a little bit like that. Now you'll notice that it comes with a V-band on the bottom of it, which is great when you're fabricating stuff. But a lot of these manifolds you get from overseas often come with this sort of old school, I think it's like a TL style, like 38 mil, something like that. Anyway, you can get adapters. So for about 40 or 50 bucks, you can get one of these things, which is made on a CNC, and you can stick it there to then stick your wastegate on like that. So we'll be able to run our wastegate. You could return it into the dump here if you wanted to, or you could go up into the atmosphere or wherever it is you want to go. So we're going to plug that in and see if it fits. After discovering that my adapter in fact does not fit, I'm instead going to run water lines to water cool the turbo. We also need to start thinking about how we're going to get the extra fuel into the engine to make a bigger bang. Everybody, Dave has arrived to help us wire up the Camry wire because we're on the dyno in like, I don't know, 48 hours, some ridiculous <laughs> short amount of time. Love a deadline. You love a deadline. Love a deadline. Dave, do you love Camrys? Uh, I've never had one. I've never had a Toyota in my life. I feel like I've missed out on a little bit 
or something. You can't tell Toyota people you've never had a Toyota, they won't understand it. Correct. So existing ECU you'll stay in? Because we have an auto. Yeah. Uh, we can control autos, but it takes time. We definitely can. Uh, not in 48 hours we won't be All controlling right. the auto. Well, we'll let the factory one do it. And also, we're not, like, we're not tripling the power or anything crazy. We're yeah. going to get as much extra as we can out of yeah. a stock engine. Yeah. So the inputs are going to be air temp, coolant temp, which it needs to know. We'll take the throttle position from the throttle body, because this is drive by wire. No, no, this is cable. Oh, this is cable. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Cable. Um, awesome. And another input is our oxygen sensor. Yep. Our outputs are four coils, yep. our four injectors. Yep. Boost control. Boost control. That's it. I think that's about it for Simple. now. And then we can start playing and adding and doing cool stuff that awesome. you can't do with the factory system. Sounds great. Let's go, man. Um, Matt, awesome. Piggybacking means the original ECU will stay in place blissfully unaware that our Haltech is officially calling the shots and making the engine put out a heap more power. The Camry ECU will take care of all the boring stuff like idle, aircon and other things while our tunable ECU will manage how much fuel and boost goes into our big four-cylinder engine. To wire this up, Dave goes through each system one by one, identifying which wire goes to which injector, coil, relay or ground and matches them up to the pins on the Haltech Elite. On more commonly upgraded cars, you can get patch harnesses that mean you don't have to do it from scratch. Luckily for us though, Dave has done this a thousand times so it's coming together nice and quickly. Now what's left to do, I need to help Dave, I need to get stuff out of the way. Uh, this cruise control, I think is what it is, is in the way. I'm just going to move it so we've got more room to play, which also means we can fit a pod filter on the front of the turbo. And then I've also got to get Dave a vacuum line from the engine into the uh, cabin so he can plug it into the ECU. Then we've got a few other little breather things to work out, just where the breathers are going to go off the top of the rocker cover and make sure that it's ready for boost because this motor was never expecting to get positive pressure. It's about to. We're going to make sure that's not going to escape from anywhere. relocating the factory cruise control. I just welded the bracket, flipped around the base of it so I can stick it here on the different area of the engine bay. So that'll still work. And now we've got all this room for our battery and a pod filter and everything else we need. And I have just gently removed the bumper bar so that we can install our front mount, which is gonna be awesome. Have you showed them the flap yet? No, don't show not, them not, not yet? Soon. We, Okay, soon. soon. Uh, so, front mount first, we've got to get that uh, We've got to do the front mount. There's going to be a couple of different modes of exhausting on this car. <laughs> there is certainly. Uh, is. Which is pretty cool. Uh, and we've been having some conversations with David over here, who's looking at a PDF that he downloaded off the internet. So I'm sure that the data on there is accurate and excellent. I'm sure he gets um, phone calls about turbo and Camrys like literally every day. Uh, which is why he's loving being here. <laughs> just, just have a quick look at him, at how excited he is to be here right now. Look at that. Look at how happy he is to be working on this Camry. Except he probably actually is, because it's, it's not going to fight him. It's not like no, the LeBorg man. It's going to be he great. He owns an Evo wagon. He'd be rather be anywhere except for right here. And that's true friendship, everybody. It is. Have you got someone that would come and work on your Turbo Camry even when they don't want to? All my mates. Because they're the best. That's all of us. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so um, that's relocated. That's off. Martin, um, where's our... Can we I are just, using Chinese front mount Can I just say, because I haven't said it yet, this has been one of the most joyous turboing modification experiences that ever. That you can do. It has not fought me once. Everything has just worked. Stuff that's normally complicated. Where do you get an oil feed? How do you tap a sump? All the stuff that makes a turbo swap hard on this has been so easy. Would you go as far as to say, Martin, that working on this is as pleasant as a BRZ? It, dude, it's up there. It's really? top three. Whoa. BRZ's in the top three as well. Remember that turbo kit? Oh, yeah. Civics, but this isn't, this, Civic's not in the top three, is it? As we've learned, our kit... Honda Civic. Well, the Honda Civic kit was a bit junk too. But we got there. But this is excellent. Like, I'll just recommend. Like, buy the cheapest camera you can find. Buy some of this turbo gear. Maybe not the kit we bought. Initially. Imagine if it actually works. Imagine. And it's uh, good and it's I fast. I hope it does work uh, because it's got to go to the dyno and then next week uh, it's getting shipped to Queensland, of course, to appear on the new uh, TV commercial, The Oils Campaign for Super Cheap Auto, uh, who are the ones that asked us to do this. Actually, they didn't ask us to do this, let's be honest. They're like, can you make us an awesome car for our new ad? And we're like, nope, but we can do this. Oh, this is awesome. 
48 hours till the dyno, so maybe we should actually do some stuff. We've built a few cars to be featured in super cheap auto ads over the years. They are huge productions with lots of moving parts and heaps of people working hard to make the final ad something that is truly a spectacle. We're just one small cog in the exciting production that usually results in being one of the best commercials on Australian TV, with a scale and level of automotive awesomeness that is rarely seen. On one level the car's a prop, but it also needs to work and fully function as a car that can do some stunts and get driven hard over and over again for repeated takes. To get the intercooler mounted, the first thing we're going to do is remove the factory power steering cooler. We'll sort something out with that later on. I'm then going to gently remove the factory airbox so we've got somewhere to run our hot side piping. My next job is to make a dump pipe. It's a little bit squashy on that side of the turbo, so I'm going to use a donut, which you cut up well together and it gives you a super tight radius turn. I'm recycling the factory header flange so I can adapt it all back to the stock exhaust, which actually doesn't look all that restrictive, except for maybe the rear muffler, which we'll probably just hack off. To mount the cooler, I'm going to bend a few brackets and hang them off the factory bumper support. With the cooler in place, and now that we know where the turbo inlet and outlet are situated, we can use the bends that came in our kit to join it all together. The more bends and silicon joiners you have, the more chance there is for potentially blowing off pipes or boost leaks, so we'll weld one or two of these sections once we've got it all successfully mocked up. From here on in, it's just pipes and more pipes while I get the intercooler sorted, and Marty is going to get our exhaust hooked up. Camry progress is freaking excellent because there's a dump pipe on there and it actually fits. Just, but it actually clashes with the uh, thermostat housing, which on a Toyota is very like, goes that way, which isn't the way of the dump, but- It's very erect, Martin, isn't it? Is, it? Isn't it? It's very like proud. It, it's very proud. Whereas apparently, I just worked out, this spare Forester one I had kicking around. It's a bit sad. It's a bit smaller and it points downwards, and it's, but it's also older, so it's to be expected somewhat. The good news is this is 74 mil across, which means it's gonna fit. Was it pointing up when it was younger? I have no idea. Old Foresters, don't know. This is an old Forester, so it droops, droopy. Okay. Uh, the intercooler, this is one part of the kit that appears to work. It's hard to get a pipe wrong, isn't it, well, really? Yeah. Um, you know, manifold didn't work, turbo was cracked. Um, but this here is attached. Uh, we've been having a lot of conversations about the size of it. It looks novelty size, doesn't it? This one here, it's a little bit... Yeah. It, it's only got about an octave of range. Yeah. We could triple that for sure and fill up all of this space. Maybe we will. Maybe we will at some point, we don't need but to. we actually uh, want to try and use some of the kit because that was the whole point. We got silicons, we got this. Uh, so I'm just kind of, um, I'm just kind of trying to assemble this and anything that's in the way, I'm just throwing in the bin. It's just, it's literally going in the bin. Uh, and then up here, we'll have a straight shot straight over to there. Um, we're looking good. It is. And we're looking like we're gonna be on schedule for the dyno in 48 hours. The mad thing about a car like this and working on it with your mates is that it's simple to play with and it's cheap. This means you don't need to be scared about modifying expensive parts because you can buy a whole other Camry for less than 10 bucks. Cheap cars unlock the spirit of experimentation and ingenuity in a way that supercar owners with a briefcase full of cash will rarely have the opportunity to experience. Dump pipe is the only thing on this entire car that's fought me. It's the only thing that's put up a fight. And connecting two things like that together I find challenging. Maybe there's some magic tricks that exhaust people know how to do it. But using that factory flange means it's easy to get that dump pipe off. Why would we need it to be easy to get that dump pipe off? You'll soon see. But for now, that is done.
last night was a bit of a late one, but now it's less than 24 hours until this thing needs to be on the dyno. Dave has been helping the, like the absolute legend that he is to get this what working. What a boss. What an absolute boss. It's a bit tricky because we've sort of got to fool the camera into thinking it's not turbo, but letting us be turbo. This is a screamer pipe. Normally I don't have screamer pipes. Normally I like to plumb them back. Not this time. Going for it's going to scream like a banshee. It's going to be so um, screaming. There's also going to be, have we discussed yet, Martin, the double exhaust setup situation? I think uh, we did, didn't we, we? we? We hinted that that might happen, but we haven't so done it there's yet. There's going to be a little bit of that, but first we need to make sure that it actually starts. There's been um, a lot of petrol and other things leaking out of the car that shouldn't have been. Leaking into my um, face. But have we got a thumbs up that we can start it now, Dave? We do. Not a thumbs up, but we have an A-OK. -okay. So um, let's attach this and then let's... Let's hear it not working, Dave. <laughs> 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 the camera's getting filled up with some fresh E85. Dave is sitting in there, titillated with excitement, isn't he? He is. It's a bit I of a tricky one. I think he's on Instagram or something. In Probably. There. It's a bit of a. Oh, she's full. Full to the brim. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one because we are doing the piggyback setup. Um, we don't know what the car's going to do. If you do it all from scratch, you go, okay, injectors, whatever. We are, we're not sure if the camera's going to accept its turbo or it's going to reject it like an implant. And this kit, like this is not a kit. No. Like it's not a kit at all. <laughs> no. It's a box full of parts, half of it's shit. Like you cannot buy it and just go, it'll work. Unless in that box is, you know, there's a Marty... There's a me, there's five other people, there's a Dave. You know what I mean? Yeah. With like all sorts of experience and expertise to do things. It's not a kit. Like the, the kit is, um, unfortunately, the kit is the cheapest of the cheap, which you've got to expect for that kind of money. It's what can we were aiming you, for. Can you spend two or three times that and get like stuff that would work? Then I would probably argue yes. It's still reasonably cheap. Like that manifold was 100 US dollars. Um, not too bad, actually, the turbo, under a thousand bucks. So yeah. I'm still very much all about buy a cheap nugget like this that's mad and then turbo it and have an excellent time. I'm still all for oh, it. Oh, totally. But and can you, you buy six... all the different components, but anyone so. selling you a box for 800 bucks that goes, this is all you need to turbo your car? Like, yeah. no. I think also because that motivation is to put as much margin as possible but put the crappiest stuff in there and you might be able to pick and choose. And for this, I'll list out everything we used because actually I think it'll be interesting yeah. um, if someone wants to, to kind of recreate. There's a bit of custom work involved, absolutely, but... Recreatable. From that kit though, the turbo kit, uh, didn't use the turbo, didn't use the manifold, but we've used some silicon joiners. And the front mount kit, which we could have got off, you know, the internet for 150 bucks. Yeah. Oh well. So overall kind of garbage. All right, let's turn the key. Here we go. Yeah, don't love it. Um, where could we be leaking comps, spark plugs? Cool. All right. well, um... Our battery is already failing and the Toyota ECU is fighting back, but Dave will not be defeated. His piggybacked ones and zeros will battle a factory computer until this thing is choo-chooing its way into the history books of all-time turbo nuggetry. Super cheap auto jump starter for eight cylinder vehicles. Twice as much as what we need here today, but the turbo, a great equaliser. Oh, hey, hey. That sounded like a thing. Let's go, let's go. Things are happening, no leaks. Yeah, Davo. Oh, it's so close. Yes. Come, come to me. Come on, come on. Davo. It's alive! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo! You can hear it spooling. Now that the camera is idling, we can check for leaks and the manifolds and pipes can burn off any oils and liquids that have been collecting on them since we started the install. We've also found a leaking hose at our regulator, so we're replacing it. 
So even though the car is not running perfectly, this is really, really good news because what I needed to happen so that Dave could go is I needed to sit here and just to idle. Even if it's at high idle, it doesn't matter as long as the AFRs are good on Dave's laptop. Uh, that means it can sit here. And the benefit is, if you do that on the dyno, you don't have a hoist, you don't have tools, you don't have all your stuff to fix things. So I really want to idle it here overnight, basically come back tonight, spend a bit more time on it, um, fix up anything that needs to be fixed. And the tow truck is going to be here tomorrow at 7 a.m. So I have less than 24 hours. I've got like, I don't know, 13 hours or something to, uh, to get this done. But looking good. Now that we've run the car and we know there's no leaks, we can top up the engine oil and get it ready for our session on the dyno. We don't have any mistake time left, so we're going to head straight over there and while we wait for the guys to get the room ready, Marty's going to install the intake air temp sensor into the intercooler pipe and Dave is going to wire up the boost controller. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing for the first time, now with its bumper back on, the Camry with the world's cheapest turbo kit using basically nothing from the world's cheapest turbo kit for this Camry. Don't worry about it. We've made it to Haltech, we've made it to the dyno. That's very, very exciting. Last night was a very, very late night, just scrambling to get everything finished and get everything ready. But I'm feeling confident that all the stuff that we have installed is gonna work. Am I confident that engine's gonna stay in one piece? Not really. Uh, we're gonna load it up on the dyno. We got Scotty here. Uh, Dave's also here in case um, pistons hit the fan, uh, and um, it's it's Just see what it's happens. time. Yep. It's time. I'm excited. I'm actually excited. It sounds incredible. I'm scared. All right, everybody. The Camry is now strapped down to the dyno. Scotty is in there. Dave is here. Marty's in there. We're just doing the final preparations before we run it up. In preparation of tripling our power. Aren't we, Martin? <laughs> That's keen. Maybe doubling, not even. I don't hate the idle, but I'm sure it's not good for it. <laughs> chop, I personally think the chop it's sounds brilliant, wrong, but, but I don't think it's good for it. As you can probably hear, the idle is just a bit funky and it has been since we started it. Because we're piggybacking, that's sounding okay. Because we're piggybacking, it's not as simple as going, we know exactly what's going on with the coils, exactly what's going on with the injectors, all sorts of other things at factory, so you can be like, oh no, 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 trying to pull it back. Cam control, idle control, any stuff that we are not exclusively controlling. Any which we're not controlling it, because we don't have time to set up the auto. Which we can do, which would fix this, probably. And that's our backup plan if this doesn't work. There's a lot happening all at once as we run the Camry up on the rollers. We've got a mysterious oil leak which luckily is only a loose fitting, but we're also leaking a whole lot of exhaust gas too. Dave is also struggling with a few wiring anomalies and that's preventing our cam control system from functioning as it should. So, I have four different wiring diagrams that I've found for this engine. Yes. None of them match what this car is. Good, excellent. Um, I wired it up for a continuously variable and it's been trying to make it work the whole time, which is why it always sounds like a cam's... Like a lumpy idle. It's got a mad cam in it. Yeah. Um, turns out it's been on lift a lot of the time. Oh, okay. So it's on a different cam profile, which is why it sounds like it yep. does. So yep. It's trying to kick in its VTEC before VTEC can actually kick in. Yeah, so it's very similar to the wagon actually, yes. so it'll be exactly the same. So it just doesn't run well with that lift. I think it's a cable tie <laughs> or a bearing. Oh yeah, no, it's that, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so I think, yeah, Scott will now reprogram that output as a lift okay. and we'll turn it on at higher cool. RPM. Oh, cool. So it gets that extra air through the cam um, and then it will operate properly. Uh, we checked the timing, um, it was off by a little bit, which seems weird, but um, I think we're good to go now. Great, great. Good one, Dave. 
The engine sounds much healthier and now Scotty is ready to floor it and send it. We've had to battle some wiring gremlins, but the car seems to be behaving and now we're ready for a power run. That's another round of troubleshooting, um, stuff coming loose, uh, gaskets blowing out, so now it's up to the universe to see whether this thing will actually spin up and make some power. Uh, what we need to try and find out now is if there's a way of actually controlling the T-VEC, Toyota's VTEC, uh, to actually see if there's a way of switching that on and off, which is what Scotty's job is. Oh, we'll fire it up then, Scotty. It can go. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> the toy vex broken. Oh yeah, fuel pump would help. There it goes. Eh, still sounds broken. This is the right time. How good those rods sound. I think we should keep going more. More. Take Holy down. Take down. Even though it's a Camry, it is a Toyota. That's enough. Turn 100, it off. 184 kilowatts and the off. wastegate is leaking. With the wastegate leaking, uh, 184, turn it off. My guess was hey, 120. Done. Oh, well, I was saying 160 before outside. 180 kilowatts. Uh, turn it off though. In a Camry. I know, and <laughs> no one's on fire. Well. That's Yet. a lot of smoke. It smells pretty bad. It actually, smells, it stinks really bad. We should stop now, right? Scott? No, you let Scott do whatever he wants. Oh, he's making the face. He's doing the face. Have a look at his face. Watch this. Look at his cheeky this We can look put some more numbers face. in this, I reckon. <laughs> Is this where we stop, Scott? Watch this face. Is this where we stop we're, now? We're at the very beginning there, Moog. <laughs> Oh, dude, that's gonna stonk. From 80 kilowatts to 180 kilowatts, just with a turbo and some ethanol. We might need some new tires. Definitely. It's missing a bottle up. Missing a bottle up. That is such a massive increase. It's over, is that over 100% if it goes from 80 to 180? Yeah, 125%, I think. Yeah. Like, how much do you want? It's pretty impressive. It's amazing for an unopened, tired, old Camry engine. Hey, listen, because we've got a little bit of time, do you want to just quickly see if the restriction is the exhaust system? <laughs> sure. Let's do it. So you may remember that we plumbed in our dump from the turbo into the stock exhaust. Then later on, we just hacked off the rear muffler and stuck a bit of pipe on it for the dyno. But I've got something a little bit special that I've made up that I'm keen to try out. So we've hit a wall at 190 kilowatts. Now the only change I made to the exhaust system was to take out the rear muffler and put a straight pipe on. Because looking at it, it looked pretty restrictive. That was 10 o'clock last night when I ran out of time. And the rest of the exhaust is actually pretty restrictive too. There's a cat in there, there's a muffler in there. There's actually this bit where it flattens down to probably be less than two inch in diameter. Uh, so that's our restriction, we're almost certain. This is the dump pipe, this is three inch, this isn't restrictive, but this is coming out because I've got something a little bit special to show you. That's right, a hater pipe, AKA a pipe up the bonnet. And of course, in honor of our Subaru, it's even got a tractor flapper on it and I absolutely love it. Here we go, we call it a hater pipe. It's kind of more like a tractor flap. We might make a mess of the roof of your dyno. Oh, I love it how it rattles <laughs> perfectly like that. It's like a truck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty cool. All right, so that's the right last pull. 183. Wait for everything to warm up, get the sensors all warm. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, 
<laughs> 200 kilo one. 200 kilo one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Look at it go. Yeah, nice. Exhaust to no exhaust. Yeah. Up the top, it is absolutely a restriction. It is? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, because it's tapering down there as well. Yeah. So no problems at all with that. So that's fantastic. The mixtures look good. Everything looks feels good. Brilliant, man. To be honest, it even starts like quite nice. <laughs> starts great. Doesn't sound like something with a tractor on it. Scotty, thank you so much. That's an amazing result. 180 or nearly 190 actually with the exhaust on. Our tractor flap got us over the 200. 200 got... kilowatts of the wheels in a stock Camry. Camry. Yeah, and a few things we can do. As always, it's always a learning experience on the dyno. I've learned more. I know what I need to improve. I know where I can spend some money, not a lot. A better intercooler is not expensive. Use the same pipes. Happy days. Every car is just getting better and better. It's really a, impressive. This thing, thing will drive great on the street with the auto. So keen. Well, put it back to stock. Maybe I'll come get it tomorrow and drive it home. Killing it. Perfect. Good Thanks, bro. You're a legend. All right, people. It's my first drive of the Camry. Let's go. Two and a half times <laughs> its original power. We've gone from 79 to 200. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> What the an absolute nugget. It. Can you even believe it? I can't Can believe it. Can you even believe the difference? Oh, just how it comes on. It's got Makes the turbo the right noises. noises. It's got the gate. The I, gate, I, I just, <laughs> The gate. It's just so ridiculous. But it's I so absolutely ridiculous. love it. And other people <laughs> in cameras just look at you like, what on earth are you doing? They're like, wow, well done. Um, anyway, this was an absolutely massive video. Huge. A huge project. Good on you, Martin, for driving this. Uh, and getting the, the turbo kit, of which we used basically nothing from, except the exactly. silicon joiners. And, and you know what? It was a bit of a fight, but actually quite fun. I highly recommend. Like, if you want to just get something silly and get some turbo bits and even learn how to do it, I reckon this is the way to go. Like, you can't argue with that. It's fun and it's cheap. Uh, and if you want to see this car doing a cameo in the new Super Cheap Auto TV yep. commercial, we'll put a link down below. Plus, there's a thing popping up now. Thank you very much. That is the Mighty Car Mods budget turbo conversion. We hope you enjoyed it, Martin. Camry. I think we deserve a little hole. Uh, what did I just call it? Did I call it a Corolla? No, you called it a Camry. Did I? I, think. I don't Sometimes know. I forget but what it is. It's about to get picked up and to go on a trailer to get sent to Queensland so it can be driven around. And then when we get it back, yeah. I'd there's I don't more. feel like this is the end. Oh, this is it just works, the beginning, It's Martin. great, but I reckon we gotta, we got to go have some fun with this. It's just the beginning, Martin. But it's been such a big build that let's have a week of holiday. And by holiday, just talks to you yeah. up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, YouTube. See you soon on the internet. We'll be back in a week or so.